Ferguson County and welcome to the recap of the April 20th, 2021 council meeting. Uh, I'll start uh, with our ordinance's third reading. Our first ordinance 2021-015 was a fee and lieu agreement with ENI Engineering, e e &I Engineering USA. They're building a 100,000 square foot addition uh, on 12 and a half acres. They're going to create 200 new jobs. Uh, $13 million investment. They started out, they're currently at 600 jobs and they're going to be over 800 with a $28 per hour average pay. Um, excited about that. That's the old Supreme Machine off of I-85 in District 4. Uh, another foreign country uh, that's investing in Anderson County and contributing in a good community partner. 2021-016 is an ordinance to amend the code of ordinances on new subdivisions. Uh, basically what it's doing is a completion of improvements on plats must be done within 12 months. Uh, they can uh, apply for two six-month extensions. If not completed, uh, the preliminary plat uh, will be revoked and a new preliminary plat will be required. This is to keep them from land banking or or holding up progress or getting approval on things and then land banking and waiting for years to come and to keep things moving and also be a stormwater management tool for us. Uh, ordinance 2021-17 was an ordinance also to amend the uh, subsection and this for the time period of completion for sewer extensions. Construction on our sewer extensions must be began must begin within 12 must begin within 12 months from the preliminary uh, plan. Uh, the sewer department manager he can or does have the right to authorize two six month extensions. If not, uh, the preliminary acceptance will be revoked and fees will be forfeited. And that's again to as money's out there for sewer and, and time uh, going in to uh, keep the project mo moving forward and not tying up uh, projects, time, and resources from county employees. Um, we had a couple of ordinances. Uh, second reading, Ordinance 2021-18 was a fee and lieu agreement. It's Project B4. Um, that's in my district, and it's coming up. We're not at liberty to say right now, but it's a 250,000 square foot spec warehouse industrial building, uh, $11.89 million investment. Uh, the taxes on it this current year was $78 a year. In 2022, they're estimated to be over $34,000 a year. Um, that's also exciting, and it's one of those things that I'd mentioned earlier that we used to have to go out and, and ask people or woo them or persuade them to come into Anderson County. Now we have people coming in here uh, speculating on Anderson County, looking to, looking to be a part of Anderson County. And it's a good thing, uh, keeps the county from having to invest in, in speculative businesses or speculate on warehouse space. So uh, hopefully that'll be a good partnership and create some jobs and opportunity as well. We had an ordinance 2021 20, through 2022, 20, and that was just to clean up some committees that don't meet anymore or haven't met in a while. Uh, one was the Purchasing Review Committee, and it was one that we that hasn't met in a while but still needs to be on our books. Uh, we cleaned it up. The administrator can appoint the uh, purchasing director and one or more members to resolve any grievances. Uh, the panel has 10 days to review the complaint and also has 30 days following the meeting to come up with a solution. If not, then it can be brought before council and council may have to intervene. Uh, 2021 was a construction board of appeals. Uh, basically, uh, the county administrator can appoint someone, a licensed contractor, construction, someone in technical technical codes, building and code side, uh, or design professionals, and administrator would be allowed to appoint five members and it would take a, a majority vote of those five to uh, resolve any appeal. Uh, the EMS Advisory Committee was Ordinance 2022 and it was an ordinance to dissolve our EMS committee and basically uh, 
as the way our EMS is structured and set up, um, the committee isn't really necessary or is no longer needed. We also had uh, ordinance 2021-24 was an ordinance to approve a ground lease between Tri-County Technical College and uh, the Tri-County Technical Research Foundation. And they have uh, some grants from SCDOT and DHEC to uh, recycled rubber to be used in pallets, uh, hard plastics, uh, shipping containers. Uh, they're going to lease uh, 5,516 square foot at the old, I call it the old Ryobi building, the old Singer building, but at, at 1428 Pyramidary Road to do their asphalt research lab. And they will be leasing that building from the county at market rate. Um, there was also an ordinance, I think the ordinance 25, to approve a, a ground lease between Anderson County and Tri-County Tri Tech, to approve a ground lease between Tri-County Technical College's Enterprise Campus, and they will be at 1428 Old Pyramidary Road as well. And it is um, to pr promote and to enhance economic development here in Anderson, Anderson County. As far as first readings today, we had 2021-026 uh, uh, was an ordinance or a fee and lieu agreement between Anderson County and Project Greenlight. It was an $8.65 million investment, 27 new full-time jobs, uh, $28 per hour, uh, uh, annual payroll of $15 million a year. And it's um, in our packet, it really didn't say. A lot of times they keep these projects secret until close, but our head of economic development uh, said that it, it's a company that's been, a U.S. company that's been in operation for over 80 years, and they're going to do a 50,000 square foot logistics and warehouse space as well, and 27 new full-time jobs at $28 per hour, so more jobs. And there was two things that was pulled, an ordinance to approve a, a, a sub-lease agreement on uh, River Forks Recreation Area and Weldon Island, and I think um, there was some confusion there. It was actually uh, was going to be on there to allow the administrator or Anderson County to sit down to discuss uh, and look at plans and proposals that they have and to discuss a lease once that, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the proposal, <coughs> once the proposal is brought before uh, council, it will be a, a public hearing to allow the public to come in, have input, they'll do some community meetings. I think at Center Rock Fire Department was one of the areas that I heard. Uh, it will be advertised and give people time and a chance to have some input uh, to understand actually what is going out there. And I think um, on any project like this that there's uh, a lot of social media rumors and, and misnomers that uh, when you get it straight from the horse's mouth, that, that's the, when you get the facts. I mean, so I, I encourage everyone in the area that has concerns or are interested in that project uh, once they become public to show up to those meetings, uh, provide input, and hopefully uh, can come together with a, a project that, that's win-win for Anderson County and, and the community as well. Um, uh, some first readings today, 2021-29 uh, was a fee and lieu agreement between Anderson County and Project Mullet. Um, it is a 665-acre solar farm that is going to generate, I think last year it was $2,600 a year in taxes, actually a little less than 2,600. And in 2021, it's estimated to be uh, 265,000 a year in taxes. Uh, it's a $68 million investment. It's taxed as uh, manufacturing because they're manufacturing electricity and it's based on kilowatt hours, the, the land uh, uh, property tax as well. And a, a lot of people, I think it was brought up in the council me meeting by Councilwoman uh, Wilson, that um, you know, out of that money, 
you know, they, it's not all the county's money. That money's collected by the county. It'll be dispersed out like on the normal pie chart on your uh, property tax notices. Your schools will get, what, 70% of it. Uh, fire will get some. So I think it's going to be good not only for uh, the county but for our school district. Uh, it's going to be in District 4 as well. It'll be good for District 4 and good for the community. and. It may not create as many jobs as we like to see, but if you ride around Anderson County right now, I think everyone's looking for help. So um, I posted something on E and I looking for help. Arthrex is, has a big billboard out there looking for help. People need to get online, look. There's some great, not what I just call jobs, but career opportunities to uh, build upon and start out at a salary or salaries way above minimum wage. So there's a lot of opportunity out there, uh, like I said, entry level that has uh, or provides the opportunity for growth. And I, I hope to see a lot of the, the kids coming out of school here now uh, participate or get in with some of these companies and stay home. The, the jobs are here, the monies uh, or salaries are for these jobs. Uh, you don't have to go out like when I got out of college. I mean, if, if you wanted a, a good paying job or a career, you, you moved off somewhere else. And I'm just, I got off topic on the agenda, but I'm just so happy to see the development that uh, we have going on here, the jobs, the diversity of these jobs. Uh, it's a good thing and it's going to build overall a, 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 a lasting a lifetime here in a, in a great community. I mean, you, you don't want to leave, and I'm excited about that, and I hope people uh, that's looking or concerned about careers uh, get online. If you have questions, call me directly. I, I can uh, help you out or do anything I can to help. We also had a resolution. Uh, uh, that was the first readings today. Some resolutions we had was uh, a resolution to uh, cease county maintenance on uh, uh, Mitchell Road, and I think um, that area was Councilwoman Wilson's district as well. Uh, there is an issue out there, a problem out there that uh, road abandonment will solve, but there is county roads, state roads all mingled together, and the uh, state is actually doing things for improvements out there, and there was a concern about fire and safety, uh, a fire hydrant actually there, and we moved to, or she made the motion to table it, uh, excuse me, until the uh, state addresses the issues on their side. And I think it'll be, it was brought up mainly for a, a safety issue for the church out there, but it, it will go through and we're just waiting on the state to get their sides done and everyone will still be protected by fire and uh, the EMS and all still have the opportunity to use that road until it does close. Uh, there was also a resolution to cease maintenance and judicial abatement or abandonment of Hatton Road. Um, this road was a dead end road. It was 2,050 feet long. Uh, the county does put up 30 day notices, signage. Uh, no one has complained. There actually were, we were petitioned to close the road and that was off the uh, 413 area out in District 3. And it was brought up before uh, drugs and vandalism that was going on in that area. We also had a resolution 2021, 20 and 21 that were, I'm kind of combining, it was Project Greenlight, Project Mullet, which we, we discussed earlier, which was uh, to actually simplify the, the fee and lieu agreement. It's more of a housekeeping type thing. Uh, the, the fee and lieu agreements did pass, and this is just a housekeeping type deal. Uh, we also had an ordinance to uh, a strange one that came up, uh, it was uh, Ordinance uh, 20, or Resolution, uh, no, we also had an ordinance come up, Ordinance 2021-22, and it was to release uh, some property that the county actually had a lien on that uh, is owned by Kidco LLC, which was some property that BASF had done a fee and lieu agreement back in the 80s with the county and, and back in those days, the county actually had to take kind of possession of the property and sublet it back. Uh, things have changed a lot over the years and this property is being sold or looked at to uh, for some future development. 
and it came up that the county's name was on there as a, the lessor or lien holder on that property. And we voted, and that's just to uh, clear it up, clearing up some old fee and lure agreements that kind of fell through the cracks. Uh, there was also a bid approval of $743,350 for uh, some sewer rehabilitation over in uh, Stonehaven, which I know they've had a lot of issues out there. There was actually uh, uh, some funding that came in as well. Uh, uh, company Vortec got the uh, contract and it's cleaning up some old problems that we've had out there. I, I do know that I talked with uh, Mr. Singleton over our sewer department and he informed me that in the past three years they've had issues to where we had to have pump trucks out there. It cost the county almost $30,000 uh, twice pumping all night and this will help uh, solve their issue. There was uh, nine bids on it and we went with uh, uh, a company, I think they're out of Greenville. So, and that pretty much uh, sums up our meeting for today. Again, I apologize for getting off topic on the jobs, but like I said, if uh, anyone out there is looking for a career or needs some help or some steering in the right direction, pick up the phone, give me a call, 864-934-7053. I'm here and I'd love to help.